what does political power look like? Think about it. There's enormous opportunity and enormous potential in that realization. If you could see political power, it would be this brown, unassuming building on a downtown street in Ottawa. Behind these doors, decisions worth hundreds of billions of dollars and decisions that impact the lives of millions of people and Canada's relations with foreign powers are made every day. When they say the halls of power, these are the halls. For some elites and special interests, getting through these doors and getting that money and influence is the only thing that matters. What's good for the country? What's good for Canadians? Those considerations are second and a distant third. Power, money, and influence is the name of the game for them. There's a saying, who do you know in the PMO? Under the Trudeau government, the concentration of power and influence has evolved. It's more complicated. The PMO uses outside organizations and a series of appointments to prominent positions to help keep Trudeau and his Liberal government in office. This is a story about an organization that shares the same name as the Prime Minister. This is a story about how it began getting a lot of cash from foreign donors. At the same time, a seeming straight line of appointments and political influence appeared between the Trudeau Foundation and the Trudeau government. The implications of this are extraordinary. This is a story about the Trudeau Foundation. As I thought about this, I began to realize the way that this is organized. Influence, political cover, money, and positions. You have Prime Minister Trudeau at the top. Then there are all those he and his government have appointed to prominent positions and special roles. Of course, Justin Trudeau often turns to these reliable allies when he finds himself in hot water. So let's call this what it is. The Trudeau Family Foundation was started by the Chrétien Liberal government with $125 million of Canadian taxpayers' money. Let's meet some notable Trudeau Foundation alumni. Senator Peter Harder, former Trudeau Foundation mentor, former head of the Canada-China Business Council. He was Trudeau's transition team head when the Liberals took power in 2015. Then Trudeau made him his first Senate government leader. You get LaBelle, former Trudeau Foundation mentor. Trudeau named her chair of the advisory board for Senate appointments. Anne McClellan, Trudeau appointed her to report on the SNC-Lavalin scandal. Trudeau Foundation mentor, David Johnston, Trudeau named him special rapporteur on foreign election interference. But there should not and need not be a separate formal public inquiry. Senators Francis Lankin, Rene Dupuy, Patricia Bovey, Michelle Audet, and Senator Patty Level King Benson, the new Senate government deputy leader, all Trudeau Foundation alumni. The list goes on and on. The Liberals have former Trudeau Foundation alumni appointed to positions throughout the federal government. And a pattern emerges here. Frequently, when Justin Trudeau gets caught in a scandal, and I don't know if you've noticed, but there have been a few, he just flips open his little book of Trudeau Foundation contacts and calls on one of them to give him some political cover. We saw this with SNC-Lavalin. We saw this with sexual misconduct in Canada's military. And we're seeing it again now with the Beijing election interference scandal. But hold on, governments appoint people all the time. What's the big issue here? It comes back to influence, especially with what we've learned recently about Beijing's attempts to interfere in Canadian democracy. Foreign powers have quickly discovered that it's easier to fly under the radar than it is to slip through those big metal doors at the Prime Minister's office. If you just approach organizations like the Trudeau Foundation and shower them with money, you can still get power and influence. And sure enough, at the same time Trudeau was elected Liberal leader, we see huge amounts of cash flowing from foreign donors, some even from the hostile Beijing regime, to the Trudeau Foundation. And this has continued. We've seen a stunning amount of waffling and inaction by the Trudeau government on many issues concerning the communist Chinese regime's relations with Canada. Police stations operated by the Beijing dictatorship on Canadian soil. The Trudeau government refused to ban Huawei for years. Only after our closest allies applied extraordinary pressure did they reverse that decision. Trudeau and his liberal cabinet refused to stand up in the House of Commons and vote for the motion condemning Beijing's genocide of its Uyghur people. Well, the House of Commons voted overwhelmingly 266 to zero to call China's treatment of the Uyghur population, the Muslim minority in Western China, 
a genocide. But the liberal cabinet, including the prime minister, they didn't just abstain, they didn't even show up for the vote. We even know that a Canadian member of parliament's family faced threats from the communist regime for him proposing the Uyghur genocide motion. It is clearer every day that the Beijing regime actively influenced the last two Canadian elections. Trudeau was advised about it and did nothing. Justin Trudeau once again turned to his Trudeau Foundation contacts to help manage his way out of this mess. He tapped former Trudeau Foundation CEO Morris Rosenberg to report on foreign interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections. He concluded, nothing to see here. Both national security committees, NSICOP and NSIRA, tasked by Trudeau to study foreign election interference, contain Trudeau Foundation alumni. And remember David Johnston? Justin Trudeau appointed him to decide if there should be a public inquiry into Beijing election interference. And he decided that we won't have a public inquiry dealing with Beijing election interference. Shocker. But there should not and need not be a separate formal public inquiry. We have to stop and take stock of this. How did this happen? How much does Trudeau interact with the Trudeau Foundation? He's claimed zero. The Prime Minister says there are no links between him and the Trudeau Foundation, completely separate. And any money coming from the communist regime in Beijing, he has no idea what anyone's talking about. The actual facts contradict these claims. Trudeau has deep connections with the Trudeau Foundation organization. It boasts his last name. His brother, Alexandre Trudeau, received a notorious Beijing donation and remains a Trudeau Foundation member. Justin Trudeau's government can appoint six Trudeau Foundation members and two directors to its board. The Trudeau Foundation even met with several Trudeau government deputy ministers within the PM's very office building. They got in the doors. And Justin Trudeau has appointed many Trudeau Foundation alumni to plumb positions in his government. At the start of this video, I asked what political power looked like. I said probably the best example is the Prime Minister's office building in Ottawa. But I was wrong. Under Trudeau, political power isn't held within the halls of government or even in Ottawa. The path to power leads from Justin Trudeau's doorstep to an office in Montreal. So it turns out that old saying needs updating. Who do you know in the Trudeau Foundation?